This evening we're going to be studying the Musaf of Yom Kippur. And what you're going to realize is that 75% of the Musaf service is uh, already familiar to you. We have done, uh, I would say, that much, that percentage of the, the service, and because we've examined the opening of the service, we've examined uh, the Unatan Tokev, we've examined the major PU team, and uh, we've examined the end. What's different from the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah to the Musaf of Yom Kippur is obvious. While the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah is organized around the three basic uh, sections, uh, which are the Malchiot, Zicharot, and Shofarot, the God's sovereignty, the God's remembrance, and, God, and, and reflecting on the theme of the Shofar, uh, you find that the Musaf of Yom Kippur has a different set of uh, sections. One section, which is uh, the Avoda service, the recollection of the ritual of atonement in the temple. The second section is the Ela Eskara, which is the martyrology. And the third section, loosely termed, is the Vidui section, which is the uh, confessional sessions, uh, sections, which is that section is familiar to us from the uh, evening service, uh, which we've already studied. So unlike the, the Rosh Hashanah service, where all of those three sections pull in different verses from the Torah, from the Nevi'im, and from the Ketuvim, the Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings, the uh, Avoda service, the Temple service, the Martyrology, and the Confessional, uh, I think bring a whole range of different literatures, not only biblical literature. For example, the temple service will cite passages of the Mishnah, and the Ela Eskara will have passages from medieval poetry and also uh, in Armachs or some more recent uh, creations. And the, uh, the, the Vidui, the confessional, that's the standard confessional that's, that is part of the liturgy of the High Holidays. It's not as focused on the Bible as it is. And, and that, I think there's a message in that, which is that the, the, uh, the Rosh Hashanah is focused on the anchoring in the text of the, of, of the tradition. And Yom Kippur is playing itself out in the people and the fact that the literature of the service is much more varied, I think tells us that it's, it's tells us in a very subliminal way that it's reaching into the different eras of Jewish history and not only reflected on the Bible, and that we are taking our place there as the people reciting these things, such that we ourselves uh, are, are adding to it with our own voices and our own commentaries. So what I want to do is, is get warmed up here. Uh, I, want to, I want to just go back to the beginning of the Musaf. It's going to be familiar. You're all muted. I'm going to unmute, um, ask the Chazan to unmute. And um, we're, going to, we're going to take it from the beginning of the Musaf, which is 313. I just want to, one, one more note as we begin is that, um, uh, you know, most of you will not have a minyan at home. Uh, the repetition, as we've been saying, of the major prayers and the recitation of the Kedusha happens only with a minyan. However, uh, I've been guiding everyone here to include highlights of the repetitions because the major prayers are in there. And, uh, you know, you don't get penalized for reciting the Rosh Hashanah and the Unatara Tokef um, in fact, I think it takes you to a to a a different place. I think, excuse me, part of the experience of the holidays is the silent recitation, followed by a more communal, uh, the more communal recitation. So it's the communal recitation that we're trying to recreate here in the small setting of the home, the personal setting, um, and that's why. Uh, we do it and, and because we love the music, because we want to sing, because we want the music to take us to the places that we need to take. So 
With no further ado, turn to page 313. I'm going to tee up the chazan here for the, um, the avot, what we call the avot, the opening passages of the Amida. And you are muted, so follow along, sing along with us. It's going to do it nice and slow so that we all can uh, sing with him. Go ahead. Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzchak Velohe Yaakov Ha'el Hagadol Hagimbov Anora Now, at this point, 
what I want to do is, is we, we're going to skip over to page 315. And this is the Unatana Tokiv. And here again, my theme, most of this is material that we've done already. We've, we've focused, uh, we've given a whole lesson to Unatana Tokiv, and it appears in the Musa for the first two days. We're just going to start here. I'd like the Chazan to start with Ul Shofar Gadol, just to refresh ourselves on Unatana Toka. Ul Shofar Gadol, we'll work through a couple of the, I guess we can work through the whole thing. And then, and then we'll, we'll pause it at the, uh, the big refrain of Teshuva. After that, we'll, we'll, we'll then move on. So turn to page 315. We'll pick it up from Uvu Shofar Gadol. Uvu Shofar Gadol Itaka Vekod Mamadaka Yishoma Umalachim Yechafezun Vekhil Radai Yachezun Ve <laughs> Some keep or 
Let's hold it here. Okay, obviously we would continue through the through the rest of the page and, and we enjoy especially the melody Adam Adam. Let's do just a a couple of uh, phrases there. If, yeah, that's okay, Mike. Um, Adam, 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 all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move now to 319. We'll pick it up with this this melody for the uh, Choma uh, Our our one of our favorites. Go ahead. <laughs> Yalla la 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 la
So I'm going to now move us to 325. Obviously, we could we could spend more time uh, going through that, but we don't need to. Uh, 325. Now we're we're heading into um, you know the, the the serious territory of the uh, of the Musa. Uh, Aleinu in the Musafs of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur really is a signal. It's a gateway to the serious parts. Here we go. Aleinu 325, and it will be familiar to you because we've done it, and um, uh, we also start the Amida with a melody that's very simple. Go ahead. We're not going to do the other two paragraphs on that page. Obviously, they're, they're available for, for everyone. Let's um, now turn to page 326. 326 is a lovely English reading. Um, and um, I, I, over the last several years, I've been doing the introduction to the Avoda service with this whole reading. It's a poem uh, by the Yiddish uh, writer Sh- uh, Shin Ansky. Uh, um, who uh, was the writer of the Dybbuk, as uh, is mentioned here in the column. Um, but what's so beautiful about this poem is that it, it helps us focus on the meaning of the Avoda service. It tells us that on the holiest day of the year, the holiest person of the house of Israel goes to the holiest place within the holiest land, the holiest city within the holiest land, and recites the holiest name. And so you have the convergence of all of these uh, many, many layers of uh, uh, vectors of holiness um, at this point. And um, once you understand that that's what, what's happening, the holy merging, the holy person merging with the holy place, merging with the holy time, merging with the holy name, you, you understand the meaning of uh, the whole service. The meaning was to purge the temple of the uncleanness uh, and the pollution of sin. Those of you who studied Bible with me uh, have, have heard me say that the idea in ancient Israel was that whenever you sinned, it was a, a kind of pollution. They almost understood it in a very physical and concrete way that the, the temple, and more specifically, the, um, the Holy of Holies was getting polluted. And so on an annual basis, they'd have to purge that and to cleanse it. And the idea that you could renew and cleanse itself becomes transformed in Judaism that every single person can do that. Every single person has the capability to do that. And you see within this moment, I think, the rich intellectual heritage of Judaism that uh, enables the person to understand that, that just as the Holy of Holies was purged of all of its uncleanness, uh, so too can an individual attain atonement through the process. And what the act of worship is doing in this moment is allowing us to recall the events of the temple and to present them, as it were, so that with the understanding that as we present them, recite them, recall them, 
let it be that we achieve atonement for ourselves the way that uh, our ancestors achieved atonement in the temple. And that's the meaning of this uh, passage. I would recommend everyone say it in English. And then, of course, we have some great latitude here in the text because um, the, we have a lot of different pieces of, of material here to choose from. I don't insist that everyone say them. Uh, typically, when I lead the service, I have people recite passages on 327 silently, the, P, the 328 silently, and the 329 silently. Um, and of course, there's so much to, to meditate on in the margins. But then we get to page 330, and that is where the drama begins in the, on the bima, the sanctuary drama, because that is when we are recalling how the uh, Kohen Gadol managed to effect the atonement. And that starts with Vachacho Hayaomer, and that's when I cue the Chazan and say to the Chazan, okay, we're going to, let's follow along page 330. Now, this melody is a very, is a, is a, I think it's a very, very simple melody. Chazan's going to go into it uh, for us. It almost has the Ashamnu quality. Da 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 I don't know if the Chaz is going to do it that way, but um, uh, that that makes it easy. So let's take a look at page 330, and we'll, we'll walk through this now. Well, what makes it even easier is that, uh, although it isn't minor, not major, but what makes it really easy is that it's a leader response. So you don't ever have to, it's, every word is repeated. So... Uh, so whatever I say, you say. So this is how it goes. Vecha, well, except for the first three words. Vecha chaya omer, ana Hashem, ana Hashem, chatati, chatati, aviti, aviti, pashati, pashati, lefanecha vi. Ani uveti, and then we go again. Anavashem, kapena, kapena, lachatai, lachatai, velavonot, velavonot, velivshayim, velivshayim, shechatati, shechatati, v'sheaviti. And now the leader response stops, and, it chant, and the chant continues like this. Okay, so that takes us to the, the, the moment. Now, in the synagogue, what would happen at this moment would be that we would all rise in the, the, um, the we cue the person opening the ark to open the ark at the Kohanim. And here, what we're doing is we're recalling that the Kohen Gadol recites it. These are the words from the Mishnah. Uh, and so I'm going to cue the chazan to go v'hakohanim. V'hakohanim v'ham ahamadi ham. Yeah, it's a little bit. I haven't done this in a while. Let me start over. V'hakohanim v'ham. Ha-omedim ba'azara Kshehayu shome'im et ha-shem Ha-nitpad ve'anora Mefarosh yotze mipi kohen gadol Piktusha uftora you Koreim, and on Koreim you would go down on your knees, or something like it. Umishtachavim, 
ומודים ונופלים על פניהם. And typically the person would be on their face at this point, but if you can't do it, do whatever you can. Just something to show that you're doing something different. And then you get up. Ha'omerim, Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto, Le'olam Ba'ed. Okay, so so what you have there, and the Chazan was was uh, very um, lush in the in that chant, and that was beautiful. Um, I would I would advocate that that uh, you, you can simply sing it. Um, in in a very plain way, uh, just staying on on a note, maybe two notes. Vakoanim ve'am haomdim bazara keshayu shomi metako et et shema nikbar ve'anora meforash yotze mi pia kohen gado b'kdushah tohara. It's and, and that puts it into the nusach category, and that alleviates. You know the the complexity and the richness of of uh, the cantorial. Just it, it, as long as it's it, as you're able to feel that you can chant it, chant it, um, and and understand that we're moving up to the moment where we say Hayukorihim Mishtachavim Umodihim. And again, uh, you know we don't have to do the actual bowing on on our knees. Um, uh, it just won't, it's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> certainly, the fall, falling on the face not going to happen. Uh, but you can certainly bend at the waist and and say, "God, it, it's supposed to be, but it's not." Uh, now, uh, we we typically in the synagogue go back and forth between Hebrew and English during the avoda. And uh, because the, the Hebrew is a little more complicated, I spend a lot of time in the English parts. And here I would go to page 330 in the English, the second confession, and simply read it out. This is what we would do. I'd say, uh, he walked uh, to the east of the courtyard where two goats alike in form and size stood ready. And what you could do at that point is either assign it to someone who is in your pod or say it yourself in that whole paragraph. And then it repeats, and we go to 331, and we do the same thing again. And here comes the Chazan. He's going to do the Chach Haya Omer on page 331. Okay. <laughs> Hashati Lefanecha Aniuveti Venea Haron Am Kedoshecha Anavashem Kapena Lachataim Velavonot Velif <laughs> Kakatub trot moshe abdecha ki bayom hazeh yechape alechem litaher etchem mikol chatotechem nifnei Adonai vehakohanim veham haomedim vazara שהיו שומעים את השם הנכבד והנורא מפורש יוצא מפי כהן גדול בקדושיו תורה היו קוראים ומכתב 
רחבים ומודים ונופלים על פניהם ואומרים ברוך שם כבוד מלכותו לעולם ועד And so here again, I would go into the English. I'd change sides of the page and go to the sprinkling of blood and read that whole passage. Now we're not going to do, I'm not going to uh, do v'chachaya moneh achat 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 achat, you know. It's, it's a little complicated um, and, um, and it is in transliteration. I would simply read it in English and not have to worry about any cantillation at that point. Um, And then, uh, again, reading silently to the third confession, I'd read that out loud in English, and then I'd say, uh, we, met, we, we uh, resume here at the middle, the Chachayo Omer, and this is the third time, the third bowing. So go ahead, Chachayo Omer. Avu Pashu Lefaneha Amahabet Israel Anavashem Kaperna Rahatayim Velavonot Velipshayim שחטאו ושאבו ושפשעו לפניך עמך בית ישראל. כך כתוב בתורת משה עבדך כי ביום הזה יכפר עליכם לטהר אתכם מכל חטאותיכם לפני אדוני. והכהנים והעם העומדים בעזרה שהיו שומעים את השם הנתפד והנורא מפורש יוצא מפי כהן גדול ותושב תורה. היו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים ונופלים על פניהם ואומרים ברוך שם כבוד מלכותו Okay. So this is uh, uh, the, the rich part of the whole service, the three-time uh, repetition of the formula Anav Hashem Chatati, and the last time it's he's Chatan, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, confessing on behalf of the people. It, it, the progression is, the first confession is the, the high priest and his family, The second confession is the high priest's family and the tribe or the, the group of uh, B'nai Aaron, and the third is for the entire people. Uh, that then places us um, in, in the postscript of the, the um, Avoda service, none of which we say aloud. Uh, I do like the, the prayer on 333, 333, um, and here it's going to be completely optional. I'm not going to We're not going to sing it for people, uh, but the, the fact that it's an acrostic uh, based on every letter of the Hebrew alphabet uh, in terms of, you know, what kind of year will it be? Shnat osem, shnat bracha, shnat gizero tovod nufanecha, etc. That, I think, lends a certain playful um, aspect to what is obviously a very deep and serious moment. Let it be an abundant year of 22 different kinds of characteristics based on each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, uh, optional. The second optional thing is 334. Um, you know, the bolded line, Ashrei You know, this is a moment where we are saying we don't have the temple uh, 
but the, the joy in seeing that, again, not mandatory here, as well as the different passages on 335. I myself will skip all the way to 336. We pick it up here with just a little hint of a slicha, a little hint of a, uh, a, a uh, you know, the, 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 well, what we do at slichot. And here, let's sing it together, 336. Go ahead. Yeah, we come in uh, at the red, the red diamond about a third of the way down the page where it says Ta'avor al Pesha. Ta'avor al Pesha v'timche asham keyom vayit yatsev imo sham ta'zin shabatenu v'takshiv menu ma'amar keyom vayikra b'shem Adonai, and then everybody assembled together, will say, Vaya Avor Adonai Al Panav, Vayikra Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim, Verachesed so now on this page we have an elaboration of every one of the words of that last verse uh, this is going to be in the optional department but it has a lovely um, you know counterpoint point counterpoint you know, I, I can speak for the Chazan and me. I mean, we, we, when, when we're doing this in shul, you know, I take the, the second line, he has the first line. And if you have that kind of configuration in your home and you're able to do that, you certainly can. If not, I would either A, go into English on this. It's perfectly beautiful. Adonai, I am who I am before you sin. Adonai, I am who I am after you sin. God, merciful to all, Gentile and Jew, merciful to all. Etc. Each each of the second uh, parts of these lines is a, a kind of interpretation on that, but we're not going to do that. Uh, it's an option for you, and that puts the the bracket on the avoda service. That little uh, that page. All right. Do we want to draw their attention to the lines at the bottom underneath that little uh, thing there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so continue. You, you whether you do that little thing there or not, you would still want to continue at the bottom. With the salachta, the salachta lavonenu ulchatatenu unchatanu slachlanu avinu kechatanu mechalanu malkenu ki fashanu ki adonai ki ata adonai tov besalach verav chesed lechol korecha. Got to, remember to, got to remember to ask for forgiveness. Absolutely. Otherwise, you've missed the whole thing. So having having put the bracket on the Avoda service, let's just uh, emphasize what the purpose of all of that recitation is, so that even if you don't get the melodies, more or less, you know, along the lines that we've presented here, you can understand what's going on. And I think understanding this service uh, is really an assist to to doing it. Understanding that here we are, we're presenting a recollection of the pageantry of the atonement ritual on the Day of Atonement in the Holy Temple, and that by doing so, we hope to attain atonement for ourselves as we you know, assemble in our own holy places, in our homes, uh, 2,000 or more years after the original atonement uh, rituals no longer were able to take place. With that, we move into 337, which is the uh, the martyrology. Why the the Mahsor devotes a very significant amount of pages to remembering um, martyrs, I think is is um, it, it doesn't require elaborate explanation. Um, Yom Kippur is a day that is very solemn. Yom Kippur is a day that we have said in the past is a rehearsal for death. And Yom Kippur is a day that is ultimate in terms of life and death. 
and death in the manner of Kiddush Hashem, the sanctification of God's name, it does two things. It says we are mindful of our heroic martyrs who are able, who were, were in the moment when they were tested, uh, surrendered their lives for something, and that, and that we are saying they will never be forgotten. But on a, on a much more selfish basis, we are evoking a certain idea, which is God. Look what members of our people were able to do for your sake. And so, how can you turn away their sacrifice for their sake? Please save us. Please uh, forgive us. Do not uh, and, uh, allow us to reach that same fate. You need us a lot. So in presenting the martyrology, we are, we are making a, a kind of petitionary statement to God. We're saying, God, they did this for you, and you should take that into account as evidence when you weigh your judgment. Now, in practical terms, this is all silent reading, Hebrew, English, whatever you want. Um, I don't do uh, chanting. We, 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 we read it. We, um, we may, you know, there is a melody for Elias Kara. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, it's just, I would just do it. Nusa, Elias Kara, Vanavshi, Elias Pecha, Akoroteinu, Hamaroten, Ezol Gotima, something like that. It's not necessary at all. And I would read it. And this is where, this is, the, this is what you do on Yom Kippur. You take the time to read these stories. Um, and um, if, you're, if it's your wish to read them aloud, if not, to read them quietly to yourselves. Um, and they're passages from every era in Jewish history. Uh, I'm particularly drawn to the, the Yankov Vlachin poem on 341. It's a poem that recalls the Holocaust, very evocative and very beautiful and also stirring, searing poem. Uh, in the past, I've read it out loud in shul. Uh, I don't read it in Yiddish, though uh, you can give it a good shot. Uh, and, and of course, I know that there are some people here that can. Tova, I know you can read it in the Yiddish, um, but it is absolutely effective in English, and that remains an option for everyone. Uh, and then, um, we, we read basically everything silently. Um, and the same way that the uh, Avoda, sir, the Avoda section concluded with Adonai, Adonai, Arachum, which is technically part of the Slicha, uh, this section too, the Eles Kara, the Martyrology, also ends with another element of the Slicha, which is the Shema Kuleinu, 346. And so here, if you allow me, I, I will do the Shema Kuleinu. It is uh, the congregational melody, very simple melody that uh, I hope you are able to recall. Let's do it, page 346. Shema 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 Koleinu Shema Koleinu Adonai Eloheinu Husverachem Aleinu Mekabel Berachamim Ratzon Et Vilateinu And then we would go verse by verse Hashiveinu Adonai Elecha Mena Shuva Chadesha Meinu Kekedem Al Tashlicheinu Milfanecha Veruach Kod Shecha Kivach Mimenu and I'd go straight to page 347 for a stirring rendition of Kianu. Go ahead, there you go. Here we go. Kianu Amecha. Pick your key, though. 
And here we're going to turn straight to 348 and pick it up in the middle with Yasha. Ay Tafanu shaker. Ai, 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 Going to 351, and I confess that we skipped over. But you can put an al khait for the sin of skipping over, which is not really a sin. So 351. Go ahead. Top of the page. And then you continue individually to the diamond. Al khait shakhatan lepanecha beyetzer hara, ve al khait shakhatan lepanecha beyodim uvlo yodim, ve al kulam eloach selicho, selach lanu mechalanu kapelanu. Continue individually to the next diamond. Next top of the next page. Al khait shakhatan lefanecha be'enayim ramot. Al khait shakhatan lefanecha be'azud metza. Ve'al kulam. Eloach selicho, selach lanu, mechalanu, kapelanu. Al chait shechatan lefanecha biprikat ol, al chait shechatan lefanecha biflilu. Continue to the, to the, silently to the diamond. Al khait shechatan lefanecha bitzomet yad, al khait shechatan lefanecha bitimon levav. Ve'al kulam elo senichoch, 
From there, I simply go to Sim Shalom, but we'll skip Sim Shalom and do the Sefer Chaim. Go ahead. And everybody else says, Amen. That's it. And so what you've done now is uh, you, we've worked through the entire Musa. Now, uh, this has been a, a program for one hour, and I spoke for a good 15 minutes, 20 minutes of it. Uh, so uh, at the very, at, in, in the, the time allotted should be something like 30 to 45 minutes. In shul, we, we do this, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to do this. Obviously, that's not going to be the case here. Um, and, and of course, there's nothing that stops you from um, uh, A, saying more, singing more, doing more. But uh, just for your own frame of reference, so the timing on this is, is, is approximately half hour. Um, and uh, my recommendation for, you know, the way that we would do... Uh, Yom Kippur is uh, to allow yourself the opportunity to sleep in a little bit, start the service at more or less 10 o'clock, uh, read, do, do some shachri, read some Torah, do the Musaf, got nowhere to go, take a nap, and then uh, uh, the day is over. Uh, we are going to do uh, an in-person ni'ila uh, for a limited number of people if people want to make a a reservation for that. Uh, it'll probably be about 50 people with some hopefully outside. Um, but we will also put the, the final chauffeur blasts on online uh, concluding Yom Kippur. Uh, my theme throughout the whole presentation is that this is doable. It's doable. Uh, we understand of course that, that there's tremendous artistry in Chazanut and in Lini, but it's not necessary in the private setting. If you are simply aware of the basic melodies, many of which are just now in our bloodstream, uh, you will have a very, very satisfying uh, hour, two hours of davening. I'm gonna then, uh, what I'm gonna do now is open it up if they have comments and questions. I'm gonna unpin myself here, okay? Um, I'm gonna unpin. Uh, uh, Rabbi, uh, just yeah. a question. You mentioned uh, uh, that, uh, and, and I saw the uh, the three levels of services 
Is, yeah. that, is that available online yet or? Uh, it's not available online yet. My, my deadline for the printer is Monday. Good. So once, it, <laughs> once it's available uh, for the printer, it'll be put online. Very and, good. You know, okay, go ahead, you can tell. Just a quick question. You, you talked about doing the repetition. Was the implication that we shouldn't do the silent Amita first or we no, should just no, go to the- on the contrary. You should do definitely do the silent and then go to this. Okay, yeah, do, even though do, we're a do, small group. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the, okay. the, the real obligatory just, just davening. Just one clarification. Yeah. The obligatory davening is the silent, and the, the repetition is to have, a, have an experience to, to, do, to get somewhere, you know, to do something and to feel, you know, I mean, as, as difficult as it is to be apart from everybody, to feel somewhat of a connection to the liturgy and somewhat of a connection to each other. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Seems doable. I'm sorry? <laughs> Seems doable. It's doable. <laughs> and the Chazan has most of this already online at soundcloud.com slash hpctcae. We're, we're, every day we're putting on more and more material um, and things are happening. You know, I have a feeling that September the 1st is, is the emotional moment, you know, for people to say, oh my God, like it's here. It's here already. It's here already. Hey, September the 1st has already been May 1st, so. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. 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 Have a wonderful Thank evening. You. See you all. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Muscle tough on the wedding. Yes. Muscle tough. Muscle tough. Muscle tough. Thank you.